What's up, everybody? It's Marcus D'Angelo, and we are back for another episode of Everybody's Got a Pod. And, of course, you know who this guy is. That's the Hall of Famer, Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. Ted, how you doing, my friend? Uh, do you know what, Marcus? I feel like a million bucks, <laughs> uh, to coin somebody's phrase. And I am, uh, I'm excited because, uh, well, my wife and I are going to – we are going to take a little, you know, like un, it's kind of one of those unplanned deals – I'm speaking at a church tomorrow night in Hattiesburg, which is about 90 miles south. Right. And, and instead of coming home, I'm taking my wife with me, and we're going to go continue south to the beach. And we're going to, you know, uh, go to the, uh, I can't remember which one it is. I told her to pick one. There's hairs and whatever, but it's like we're going to the beach and a hotel slash casino. <laughs> All right. So yeah. if you're if you're feeling like a million bucks right now, you're gonna be feeling like a billion bucks here after the weekend. A little getaway. Yeah, you got it, buddy. Man, the much needed, well deserved. We talk about it all the time that you keep busy. You're still on the road just as much as ever, seemingly out there doing signings and meeting folks in towns. Yeah. Guys, if you if you want to keep up with Ted and uh, find out where he's going to be next, you've got to follow him on his social media. You can follow him at MDM T- Ted DiBiase on all of his social media. So that's Twitter, Facebook, and uh, and Instagram. So uh, go out of your way to follow Ted. You can see where he's going to be next. Uh, but I'm excited where we're going next today, Ted, because uh, we're actually looking back. You know, last week we looked back 30 years. This week we're looking back 35 years at the wow. first ever SummerSlam in Madison Square Garden, um, which is, of course, it's wow. the Mega Bucks squaring off against the Mega Powers with Jesse Ventura as the special guest referee. So, uh, man, I, I can't wait. Before we get to the match, we'll watch some clips. We'll talk about the buildup, and we'll discuss some behind-the-scenes happenings. But before we get started, I do have to do my usual shtick. You know what it is, guys. I've got to tell our listeners about YouTube.com slash at Everybody's Got a Pod. You guys have got to go, to go over there and get subscribed to become eligible for our huge giveaway that's happening right now. You can be the winner of this WWE Superstars Masters of the Universe style Ted DiBiase figure signed by the million dollar man himself. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. All you've got to, that's, that's how I feel whenever I see that figure. <laughs> uh, all you've got to do to be eligible is just subscribe over on YouTube. That's it. And, you know, not only do you, are you eligible for this giveaway, but we've also got a ton of clips over there. Every single Monday, we do a YouTube exclusive video that you cannot hear anywhere else. So if you love this podcast, you're missing out on, on different stories over there on YouTube. So go out of your way. Again, it's youtube.com slash at everybody's got a pod. So before we get to August 1988, let's look back to some of the build up to this event uh, at a taping in late June, which wouldn't air until next month. Yourself and Andre attack Randy Savage during an interview while Virgil holds Liz back. This leaves Randy unable to compete with you. So uh, our pal Jake steps in and fights you that night. So, Ted, you'd be making the rounds with Randy here for live events during the build to SummerSlam. Up to this point, you had worked with some really unbelievable performers between Japan and Mid-South. You'd been everywhere. Uh, and now here you are working with Randy Savage for uh, what I assume is the first time in your career. What did you think of working with Randy? Uh, I had I had no problems with Randy. Some people have problems, uh, you know, I've heard. Uh, people have had problems with Randy. But you know, Randy and I got along enough. Uh, we got along fine, uh, you know. I know that. Well, again, uh, one more example of uh, having something in common. You know, we came from wrestling families. Yes. And uh, uh, I think that, uh, you know, played into it. But it's kind of like, you know, uh, you know, we all contributed. It's kind of like it's kind of like when I mean, the first time that Randy and I, I think we ever touched was at WrestleMania four. Wow. The main event at WrestleMania four is the first match we ever had. First time we were ever in the ring together, I believe. He would map the and you know and and for a guy who came from a wrestling background and you know 
for he was somebody who liked to map map it all out, and, and I was kind of surprised. But I said okay, uh, but I would just I'd add a couple things in there. I said, look, you know, as we're doing this, you know, if I have something that comes to mind, uh, you know, give me the grace to you know let's let's do it if it's a spot or whatever. But we're going to always come back to this, you mm. know. And so as long as I gave him that. Uh, you know, security, you know, he was fine. And I think that a lot, a lot of, a lot of times that was just it, you know, he was so intent on the, the match being, you know, like perfect. So. Anyway. I was going to ask you about that because yeah. that has been the rumor with him and DDP for that matter. Um, and then, you know, the two of those guys worked together. So I'm sure they were in heaven because they both love mapping out their matches, but yeah, it's, that had to be quite an adjustment for you going from, you know, being a college in the ring, let's feel the fans type guy to all of yeah. a sudden now you've got to remember a bunch of stuff in a match. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it wasn't, it, it wasn't that, it wasn't that hard. I mean, because it was, you know, it was wrestling and it was something I was very familiar with, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> we yes. did it. And thank God it's something you're an expert in, in wrestling. Well, yourself and Savage were in MSG just a few short days after this uh, attack uh, during that promo. And uh, you guys have a cage match that Meltzer referred to as the best match in MSG in years and the best match in the WWF since Savage versus Steamboat at WrestleMania 3. Uh, we've got that the finish of that match here for our first clip. And he's in trouble, and right now that pendulum has definitely swung, even though Ted Tibiasi is not upon his feet. Yeah, that's, that's, why Elizabeth, that's why Elizabeth has to get tougher. She's got to get stronger. She's got to help Look her. Look at he's crawling over the top of Marcia Marcia Elizabeth. 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 He's nearly out. It could be the title. He's three quarters of the way there. He's practically all the way up. He's gripping those stairs. Macho Man trying to haul it back in. There's not a great deal of strength left in those arms. Macho Man is managing to inch it back slowly, ever so slowly, but surely. He's strong in half. Macho Man is what an effort. It done. What happened by the Macho Man? Oh, he everything down. Else, he reached down and it came from the soul. It came from the spirit. What an effort. I've never seen it in all my career in wrestling. They're both on their knees now. Hammer and tongue. Man for man, Macho's got his back to that door. I don't know if he knows it's just there or not. All right, there's Macho Man going to hammer him into the room. Oh, there they go. I've got to get him up and run him in again. That's what he needs to do. Macho's got the energy. Has he got the strength? Still have to avoid Virgil. Virgil in that corner again. Love you. Get that Virgil's arm and pull him in the cage with him. That's what he needs to do. Punch his lights out. Check Look at this. Yeah, Look right. at this. We got a fan coming over here. By the side there. We got a fan coming over here. Find that out there. He got kicked out. <laughs> he was in danger. The kick was in yes, danger. Yes, he was. Danger there. Yes, he was. It's just a port. Oh, oh, look at this. He ain't good. No. Double bump. It's not good. Not good. Bunch out over the top. It's over. It's on the side. It's over. They got something in it. That's a man. He did it. What a turn of events. Oh. Can you imagine that? That was a hell of a finish, and what a reaction from that MSG crowd! Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, I'm. I, I, you know, that's. I mean, that's the best cage match I ever had. You know, and then, of course, you know, it used to be the. Uh, I think the the old rules for a, a, a cage match was you know you had to you had to go over the top and to the floor. You know. Uh, the yes. Old, you know so. That's what I was going to ask you about here, Ted, is so it used to be, you know, that a cage match, the idea was that somebody kept interfering in the match or whatever. So they're like, well, let's let's make it so nobody can interfere. The heel can't escape. Yeah. It's in a cage now. But now the objective is for the baby face to escape or for both of you to, to yeah. escape, really. So it's yeah. like, I don't know, it kind of it's it's a weird new take on a cage match. What did you think of it? I liked it. 
you know, I liked it. I mean, you know, he had, he had, of the, the, all that time that there were several times during the match where, you know, one of us is, is, is up and the other guy's down and it looks like, you know, uh, it looks like I'm going to make it. And then I don't, and it looks like he's going to make it and he doesn't, and, mm -hmm. you know, so it was, a, it was a lot of suspense, but, um, yeah, I didn't know that, uh, who, who was that that said that was the best cage, cage match or. That was that was Meltzer, and yeah, he said the best wow. cage match in years and the best match in the WWF since Savage and Steamboat at WrestleMania three. So I mean, some huge praise. And Meltzer loves your work at this time. You know, he can be yeah. critical and he can be off off the you know uh, yeah. off base at times. But man, he was a big fan of your work in this era, and it's easy to see why. That was a fun bump you took too after you got slammed into the cage. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like the so I watched the, that match in its entirety. It's about a fifteen minute video. And uh, that crowd is red hot the entire time, the yeah. whole time. Uh, and obviously, that kid tried to jump in there at the end. And, and oh yeah, well, you know when you you know when the fans are willing to, you know, hit the ring, then then you you got them. And that was, it was, like, <laughs> it was like that guy gets up there. I think I was telling first, get rid of this idiot. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it took some balls actually climbing up the cage to act like you're going to fight Virgil or whoever. Oh, yeah, any one of us, yeah. Crazy, crazy. crazy. Um, it had to be a surreal feeling for you to be working in a world title cage match in one of the most famous arenas in the world, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's I would think that anybody that uh, can say, you know, I, I main evented at Madison Square Garden in New York City. You know, boom. So, well, uh, your rivalry with Savage seemingly reached a fever pitch, and a uh, fever pitch, and so he issues a challenge for SummerSlam, which you and Andre uh, Heenan and Virgil respond to in our next clip. Let's have a look at that. I can't wait. Now it's time to get the response. The response to the challenge, of course, Brain, from Randy Macho Man Savage. They got it. He stated, it. of course. I don't think so. I don't know. He has issued a challenge to meet the tag team to my right. Eighth one of the world, Andre the Giant, a million dollar man, Ted DiBiase, on Randy Macho Man Savage's team, a partner to be named later. And that is of his choice. The challenge is out, Mr. Heenan. What is your response, please? I'll tell you exactly what my response is. You know, I've had some lengthy meetings lately with World Wrestling Federation President Jack Tunney. And I have asked for a concession. I have asked for something that needs to be asked for. Now, if he... Randy Macho Man Savage, World Wrestling Federation Champion, what? wants to go out and scrape up some partner, pay he some ham and egg to hang with him to be his partner, that's fine. You want to challenge this team of Andre the Giant, Million Dollar Man, that's fine. But under one condition and one condition only will that take place. And that's if we get an official a referee that isn't some mamby pamby sissy that doesn't have the backbone to back up a decision not like a dave hefner or a dave hefner look-alike or a joey morell that can't count the past two we want somebody that we want a man a man that that can control law and order in that ring and you ask me will we sign for that read my lips humanoid Yes, about we the, will. the big announcement. You know, gentlemen, this may be your lucky day, Mr. That ain't Heenan. the biggest announcement, McMahon. Because just prior to this interview, what do you mean? the office of the president indicated to me that a referee has, in fact, been assigned to this matchup. Who? To this challenge by the Macho Man Randy Savage. And that guest referee yes, is none who? other than... Jesse the Body Ventura! What? Jesse! <laughs> Jesse Ventura! You! You of all people! 
And look, Andre and Ted DiBiase apparently very pleased with the announcement. All right, <laughs> so there it was. The insinuation, of course, is that I'll pay him off. <laughs> <laughs> right. because he was a heel referee like everybody loved him because he's funny and he's got this big personality yeah. but he's a heel um yeah. so kind of kind of makes perfect sense that he would actually uh he would actually accept a payoff um so i've heard over the years that jesse was just kind of all business as a guy um it just it kept his head down not really looking to make friends just work uh yeah. did you get along well with jesse yeah, I, I got along. I got along fine with him, you know. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. If too many people got close to him, or if he didn't, or if he didn't let anybody get close to him. Of course, uh, you know, it wasn't like we were ever bosom buddies, but you know, he was friendly enough. Uh, and, and of course, you know, if you understand, I mean, Jesse is the real deal. You know, as a soldier, I mean, you know, if you know, if anybody knows that story, I mean. He was, he was, he was a green gray. That, uh, uh, sneaks up on you in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A hell of a man and a hell of a performer here. So it's pretty cool to, to get him involved as a referee in a match that was already really big and anticipated. Um, it's, it's about to get even bigger, though, with the addition of Hogan, which we know is coming. Um, so it's set and it's going to be a really monumental event with all this star power. It's, it's an MSG. It's Andre, Hulk, Savage, Ventura, and yourself. Uh, you had said when we talked about WrestleMania four, that it felt like a bit of a downgrade having the event in front of just 20,000 people. Um, you know, especially after seeing what was going on at WrestleMania three with that insane crowd. Uh, but here you are later, it's, you know, it's about the same attendance, but the spectacle of this match has got to kind of make up for that. Right. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, gar- you know, main event at Madison Square Garden, yeah, and it's 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 sold out. Doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> and there's not too many people that can say that. I mean, and there's there's you know probably uh, you know I don't know how how many the handful would be, but more than a handful of guys, but not not too much more. You know how and how many pro wrestlers can say I was the main event at Madison Square Garden. Man, there's not a ton, and certainly not a ton, you know, nowadays anymore uh, that are that are left around. And it's just, I mean, what an incredible, incredible thing to have in your career um, is, you know. And not only that, but I believe it was a sell at that night with you and Savage in MSG. So it's not like Hogan's the only one bringing all the folks in. It's like, man, you were you were red hot as a heel. Yeah. There's just a lot of momentum in the territory, and things were just buzzing and clicking. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, we continued, you know that. Uh... Um, you know, Andre and I, uh, we, we, we had matches. I mean, I mean, I don't know, going forward from there, I think even after that match, uh, where it was Andre and me against, uh, you know, it may not have been Hogan and Randy all the time, but it was Hogan and somebody. Yeah, I know that, you know, there was, you know, some shifting of, of people where you had been working with Randy and then you'd work with Hulk and then Andre would work with Randy. So it was cool. You know, this was back in the day when I mean, you know, let's let's think about it for a second. This had been going on since WrestleMania. So like these were not one month programs here. You, yeah. get, you guys yeah. had been having this issue for months and months and it was working. Some of the best storytelling yeah, ever. That's, that's one thing that, that you know, uh you know, saddens me today is that, you know, we would get in these programs and it wasn't like, it, you know, they were like one or two weeks and then they're over. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they would, yeah, you just said it, they, they go on. It was like, you know, like a, like a two month or three month or four month program where, you know, you and whoever that other guy is are, are battling each other. Yep, and it gives you an opportunity to not only familiarize yourself with your opponent and get better and better throughout the house shows, and you know until like when you finally do reach the blow off, you guys have had whatever hundreds of matches on the way there. Um, but also, it, it gives you an opportunity to tell a complete story, which is kind of what we got here. It, it, yeah. it, it all worked out well. Okay, guys, let's take a quick break to talk about taking care of some serious business, and I'm talking about taking care of business in the bedroom and if you're trying to take care of business you need to try blue chew guys let's just take a minute to talk about sex you remember back in the day when you were always ready to go well with a little help from blue chew you can get that thing so hard you could take it hunting it's going to help increase your performance and regain that old confidence in bed 
Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready when the opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And you want to know the best part? It's all done online. No awkward visits to the doctor's office, no weird conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy anymore. Blue Chew's tablets are made right here in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. But of course, there will be nothing discreet about your package. Look, guys, I ordinarily like to try things before I make any kind of a commitment, you know, because you want to find out, is this actually going to work? Will it work for me? Well, that's good. That's got to be the best part of this whole thing. With our deal, you can try it for a month for free. All you have to do is pay $5 shipping. This whole time, you and your partner may have been having the best sex of your whole life and been missing out on it without even knowing. So why not just give Blue Chew a shot? Just find out. You know, when you can get it for a month for free with only $5 shipping, it's silly not to just give it a try. Women are attracted to confidence and Blue Chew can help to give you confidence where it counts the very most. Don't wait any longer. Let's chew it and do it. Take advantage of our special deal. Again, you can try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code EGAP at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code EGAP, and receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Um, Ted, I, I think it's also worth noting that at this time, Adrian Adonis passed away in a tragic car accident. Uh, Adonis and his wild lifestyle were the subject of a recent episode of Dark Side of the Ring. What can you tell our listeners about your experiences with Adrian? You know, I I didn't know him well, uh, but I, you know, I, there were us a time when I was around him. I think as he, I think he came to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, when I was in Amarillo, I think he he came to to the Texas territory for a little while. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, um, kind of a different kind of guy, but, 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 uh, but we're give credit where credit's due. You know, he was a good worker. He was, you know, he, he was good at what he did. Absolutely. Kind of a wild man. Um, yeah. and I think Bret Hart told the story that the first time he ever did cocaine was with Adrian Adonis in his hotel room. <laughs> um, did you ever party with Adrian? Uh, no, it may be a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, Ted, unfortunately there's also another death at this time. Uh, Bruiser Brody would die in Puerto Rico, uh, having succumbed to stab wounds in the locker room altercation. Uh, right. most of our, most of our listeners already know that story very well, but there is a dark side of the ring episode about it and his untimely death. So you can get the full details there. Uh, Ted, had you been around Brody very much? Oh yeah. I mean, you know, um, you know, he, he and Stan Hansen. Uh, had been tag team partners mm-hmm. and um you know and brody's another guy who uh, if i'm not mistaken brody's another guy who i mean i don't know i don't know if he went to west texas state or he tried to go but um what the i mean the first day i i went to when i when i you know when i want to when the dick murdoch talked to Bill Watts and said, Hey, you know, uh, told him about me and everything. And, uh, we'd like to, you know, we, we can start him. He's been refereeing and starting Bill said, great, bring him. So when I got off the plane, the first trip I made was with Brody. I mean, uh, we, you know, he, he actually picked me up at the, at the airport and, uh, I rode with him a car. I think the, uh, it was Alexandria, which is about a hundred miles from Shreveport. Uh, was where that match was, and so my it's like right out of the bat, the first my first road trip is with Bruiser Brody. Yeah, uh, you know uh, Frank Goodish, is his real name, and um, uh, he was, I mean, you know, I mean, he bigger than life, and he and he and Hanson, he and Stan Hanson were probably one if I would say that the most famous foreign wrestling team that Japan ever had in all Japan wrestling. When you heard about the, the way and the circumstances under which Brody passed away, uh, what, what were your, what was your I was, reaction? I, I was, I was just sick. I mean, you know, um, 
just, you know, I mean, for a guy of, of his stature, uh, to, to die that way. And, 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 you know, I mean, the, I mean, it was, it was like, you know, he gets, he gets knifed by a guy who's, you know, hiding the knife. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it wasn't like, Hey, come on, let's fight. It's like, you know, cause he had, he had had that they had had, a, had, they had had a confrontation, you know, and Brody ain't going to back up from anybody. No. You know, and kind of he kind of put the guy in his place, really, and uh, and then that's you know he 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 couldn't stand that, so that you know uh, he gets knifed in the shower and 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 basically bleeds to death. Took an ambulance; they said a long time to get there, and I mean, if if they could have got to him quick, I, I don't think he'd have died. But I don't know; it's just yeah, it's just horrible scary and awful you know it's a family man and somebody that i know that you were, were good friends with and knew well so man just just what an unfortunate circumstance yeah i mean after that ted did you ever see yourself working in puerto rico did you ever work in puerto rico no nope. never once after that I, I you know i i wouldn't even consider it after that hard to blame you man well, along the way to SummerSlam, you're doing jobs for Savage by Pinfall and DQ in pretty much every city. Uh, I know that you never minded putting anyone over, but for frame of reference, you're not too far removed from working in territories where the heels tended to get a lot of sneaky victories while the baby faces sought revenge, uh, which would eventually lead to the blow off where the baby face gets his hand raised. So now that you're in the WWF doing jobs on the way to the big match, you know, it's your, it, I don't know, does it strike you as odd? I know that, you know, you had mentioned even earlier today that, that uh, it's, you know, it's a different territory and, and the baby faces have got to go over and it's, it's a baby face territory. However, yeah. like, you know, was that an adjustment for you coming in the door? Uh, not really. I mean, uh, you know, the other thing that you have to remember is, uh, is I'm not, I'm not being, you know, and and again, you know, this is this is before the guaranteed contracts too. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm getting paid well, and you know that's what it's all about is you know making the money, and 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 I understood. Uh, I mean, I you know I under, I I understood their logic. So it, as as long as you know, as long as you don't feel like you're getting screwed, you know, and I didn't in any way. Uh, uh, I was I was fine with it. You know, uh, yeah, ultimately, that's what you, uh, heel's going to do anyway. You know, heels get beat. At the end of, end of the day, if it's, you know, it's it's the finale. It may be the finale match, but they lose. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. And it's a business. And when you stop looking at it as a business, you can get yourself into weird situations. Uh, you know, Arne Anderson on his podcast years ago, uh, he was asked if, if he had been given the gold dust gimmick whenever he came to the WWF. Uh, would he have done it? And Arn's response was, "Just show me the paycheck," <laughs> and then that's kind of the right answer. Where it's like, <laughs> "It's a, it's yeah. a job. Yeah, whatever. Just pay me." Yep. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> also wanted to mention, and this is, you know, I, I had said earlier, sometimes Meltzer absolutely hits the nail on the head. Sometimes he's a little off base. So this might be one of those circumstances. I'd love to hear your response. Um, during this house show run, Meltzer says that you carried the matches while Savage did very little. Um, so I don't know if there's any truth to that. I know that again, he really respected your work, but did you feel like Randy wasn't doing much in these matches with you? No, nah, no. You know, uh, I mean, again, Meltzer's a, he's a writer. I mean, you know, what does he really know <laughs> <laughs> in wrestling? You know, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, I, you know, I had never had that, you know, I never, I never felt like, you know, I was working harder than Randy or I was you know, our, our, anyway, I guess he he was saying I was carrying it. Yeah, and you know, it's I'm just putting the pieces together. He didn't say this directly, but I know that you know during you were kind of like a bumping heel, right? You were that that bump and get up and feed guy. So I'm I'm thinking that he is seeing that, and he's like, well, gee, you know, Ted's doing all the work. Randy's just punching him, and you know, yeah. is lariating him, and it's yeah. like I guess, but that isn't that the job? Yeah, at the end at the end of the day. If you're a good heel, that's that's what ultimately you're going to do. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, you know it, it, you don't just sit on your butt in the middle of the ring and 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 in a hold and uh, but yeah, 
at, at the end of the day, it's kind of like, uh, I, I would always build a match to give the, to give the baby face the big hot comeback. Mm-hmm. And at the end of that comeback, you know, you, you know, one of two things are going to happen. You're either going to, you know, give him the screw job and, and, uh, you know, and, and go on to the next match or you're, you know, or, or he's going to win, you know? And so, you know, he, you know, he, he had already won, you know, the first time we ever met, you know, and became the champion in the tournament. And I happened to be the last guy that he had to wrestle, but now he's the champ, you know, and I'm chasing the champ. So you're not going to, you know, and, and, and I'm not going to beat him. You know, I mean, you know, I'm not going to beat him, especially on, a, in, in, you know, if it's not televised or in a, in a big event. Right. So yeah, I'm, we're, we're going all over the country, wrestling in all these spots. And, and so, yeah, I'm, I would, uh, I would, I would get my heat on him and give him a big comeback. And a lot of times I would like stop him again where it, where it would look like, Oh no, DBS, he's going to get it. And it would, and, and he'd reverse it on me and, and win. So, um, you know, it's kind of like, uh, a good heel also knows how to take care of himself. A good heel, a, a good heel knows how to get beat and keep his heat. Perfectly said. The other thing you might know, mm-hmm. you might know the like if you had history with a wrestler, like when I was, uh, you know, going around, you know, I, I don't know. I see, but we were wrestling and when I would wrestle Savage, that, that was the deal is like, I mean, we, we were wrestling it all over the whole country mm-hmm. and it's kind of like, so it wasn't like we were going back to the same town. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So a lot of what we did, we could do, you know, every night. Uh, because it was a different, it was a different crowd and it was, and, and they hadn't seen the match that we, you know what I'm saying? But when you're going, when you're a wrestler working a territory and you're going back to the same town every week, you got to, you know, you got to do, you got to be able to think on your feet and do something different. Uh, you know, that, that's, but that's, that's the improv. That's the, uh, you know, it's kind of like, and like I said, if I had history with a guy, like if, if I had had a, uh, you know, um, you know, it's kind of like, uh, as a heel, you know, I, you know, I, 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 I get real big heat on this, whoever the baby face is. And, you know, he beats me up so bad. I just get out of the ring and leave and they count me out. <laughs> I, I lose the match because I got countered out, but I didn't get pinned. Right. So, you know, I didn't lose my heat because they still hate me. You know, now, now, now they hate me because I'm a coward. <laughs> uh, Come back then the next week. Okay, DiBiase, uh, since you want to run, we're gonna we're we're gonna have we're gonna have like uh, you know, like fifteen wrestlers around the ring. You know, what, what I can't remember what they called that. Where a lumberjack. A lumberjack match. You know what? You know, and and then once the the once the lumberjack match doesn't work, then the, the, in pro, in progression the the next match would be. Uh, the steel cage match, you know, it would be, it would build to a cage match, but that's like, that's territorial wrestling. You're, you're telling a story week after week, after week, after week. And it, and the whole thing builds and builds and builds and builds until obviously you have that cage match and uh, the baby face wins. Missing in wrestling today. It really is. So uh, Hogan is back here after the filming of No Holds Barred, which would be released in theaters the following June. Ted, did you go see No Holds Barred? Of course. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I don't know if I went to see it or I waited for it to show up on TV. No, I I went to see it. Yeah. Man, you're going to find yourself kind of in the middle of stuff with the actor from No Holds Barred, Zeus, uh, and that's that's uh, the following year. So we'll we'll talk about that another time. But it's man, it's uh, it was a wild movie. I'll say that. Uh, yeah. Well, and again, you know, and when you whenever you get to talk about Zeus, Zeus had one thing going for him: the way he looked <laughs> yep. and his body. Yep. And that's where it ended. <laughs> <laughs> he had to be carried totally. 
he mm-hmm. was getting out of those matches, like those tag team matches, they'd do like elimination or whatever, he would get out immediately. It was like first 30 seconds he'd get himself DQ'd or something. It's like that's probably the right move. Yeah, well, it was well, it was planned that way. <laughs> <laughs> Hogan is picking up a ton of acting work here, though. Piper is having success in Hollywood. Your old pal Terry Funk was doing some acting. Jesse Ventura, I mean, you know, he's in Predator and uh, uh, The Running Man. So uh, did you have any hopes of maybe getting some acting jobs yourself? Well, you know, I wouldn't have turned it down, but I, you know, it's like, I, I just wonder why did nobody ever approached me about it. I'm a little su- surprised by it too, because like, man, your heat here was just nuclear, you know, at the, at the start of that match, the cage match in MSG that we watched earlier. Um, I wanted to include your entrance. I probably should have, because when you were coming out, I mean, as soon as your music hits, that MSG crowd is just yeah, going off on you. So it's, <laughs> it was, uh, I mean, you had heat. I think you would have made a really fun heel, uh, you know, on like a television show or something. Um, <laughs> Uh, did you have an agent at this time? Uh, well, no, that's the other thing. I don't think I, I, I don't think I ever had an agent. Oh, okay. So yeah. you were negotiating all of your deals yourself. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's like, there's no, uh, I, I guess, and I never even thought about that. I don't know why, but I mean, uh, and of course I never asked anybody. I didn't ever, I never asked Hogan if he had a manager or whatever, but I guess, you know, if he has, if you've got somebody like that, then the, that somebody is going to be looking for things uh, that they would think were probably, you know, like good for you. So, right. and I didn't do that. Did you so, ever wind up landing any acting work, doing anything? I was, <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm trying to think, I can't remember the name of the movie. Um, when was Terry, it filmed? Terry, Terry Funk. Oh, and uh, Sylvester Stallone. I, I just can't think of the name of that Paradise movie. Alley. Paradise Alley. That mm-hmm. was it. And uh, so there's a scene in the movie where it's it's what basically it's doing. It's 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 showing. Uh, I think Stallone's rise to the top. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Where, where, uh, I think that's it. Where he takes on all these different characters and, um, and, and, you know, I happen to be one of those where that got, you know, I got, I got turned buckled and, uh, I ran, ran into the corner and I, I jumped up to the corner and I bit the guy on the head and, and uh and then did did something and over the top i went so i was and i was gone so well now i'm gonna go watch paradise alley i've never seen it oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. uh, yeah you yeah well you better but watch carefully because if you blink you'll miss me <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely going to. I mean, uh, that's pretty cool. So I assume that just due to the fact that you're there with with uh, Terry, and I believe that I want to say that Dick Murdoch was also in that involved with that. Oh, there were there were there were several several okay. guys, you know, uh, you know, because they needed they needed extras, you know, or uh, matches and stuff, you know. That he it was like like showing it was like a montage. He like he'd be in the ring with this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy and. This guy and that was the, it was like, and, but it was in, in, in rapid succession. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, it's showing you know, them go through all the people. Several of those guys. And I don't, I can't even remember who all of them. Yeah. I think Murdoch was there too, for sure. Um, You met Stallone, obviously for this. What did you, uh, what did you think? Any fun interactions with him or just brief? Oh, well, he, he was, he was great. And, and I tell you what, I really liked him because, um, and I, I saw, I saw this take, take place. I mean, uh, they had a bunch of like Hollywood extras on mm-hmm. the set. Uh, and I think they were poking fun, uh, at, you know, at wrestling and, uh, Stallone stopped everything when he, when, I guess when he finally showed up and whatever. And he, he said, listen, he says, I don't want to hear another word, another bad word about professional wrestling he's because what these guys are going to do in 
maybe two days. It would take Hollywood extras two months. Yep. To do all we're going to do in two days with these guys. And he said it. He said, these, these, these are some of the best improv actors you'll ever see. And he was right. The, the real art of professional wrestling used to be improv. You know, you didn't know all you were going to do when you got in the ring. You knew the finish, uh, how it was going to end, because the end of the match was what would, would hook you or hook the hook, hook the, the 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 crowd to come back and see you again. Uh, and and that's that was it. All right, Ted, let's get back into the match. Uh, it's the first ever SummerSlam, and it's in front of a crowd of about 20,000 here in MSG. Meltzer was pretty unimpressed in the Observer, uh, stating that the main event was really the only worthwhile part of the show. But I don't know. I mean, maybe it's nostalgia, but I really enjoyed watching it back. Um, let's go ahead and watch the final moments of the main event and chat about it. Oh, that should have broke his jaw and dislocated his neck. Look out from behind. Hulk never saw him coming. Come on, Jesse, get in there, man. You got an illegal man in the ring now. And Andre has cleared the ring of everybody. The Mega Powers are on the floor right now. The Mega Bucks in the ring. Jesse Ventura starting to count. Both hurt bad. Oh, they're hurt bad. Elizabeth's up on the apron. I don't think she should be there. I don't think Elizabeth should, she should be on the floor trying to help her man. Jesse over there telling her right now you got to get out of here. Get on the floor, Elizabeth, and help your man. Forget about Jesse Ventura. Elizabeth just went the around floor. the corner. She's not going down to the floor. Well, she Jesse's needs in to the hot up. She's got to get on the floor and help her people out. Both guys out. Look at Heenan. He's up on the apron and Virgil as well. Everybody's on the apron. In the meantime, Jesse has stopped the count. There's no longer a count going on, Gorilla Monsoon. Oh, look at that. What is this? She took off her dress. She took off her skirt, Gorilla Monsoon. I don't know. <laughs> Elizabeth has shot everybody. I look at Jesse. He doesn't know what to do. I don't believe her eyes. Look at the million dollar man. He doesn't I don't know, know what, what to, do. to do. You don't know what to do. Look at Andre. He's bewildered. Everybody's shocked. Everybody's on their feet, Gorilla. Oh, yes, that one is just Elizabeth ever lovely. What a move by Elizabeth. <laughs> is she ever lovely tonight, brother? Elizabeth. <laughs> this is unreal. I can't believe it. This pandemonium. Look at this. All right. Savage nails the giant from behind. Oh. Hina gets down. Hulkster. Snaps the Slams a million dollar man. Yes, he did. Look at this. He's got him set up. Bombs away, perhaps. Come on, Macho. Oh, the pocket line over. Get off. And the man. Get down there and count, Ventura. Jesse, right there. One, two. Oh, he's going to get the count to three. I love it. I love it. I love it. But it's over. Oh. All right, Ted. Let's get back into the match. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> The Hogan and Savage doing like the handshake, like she did it, brother. She took off her dress. It was just, <laughs> oh, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it's just really you know, funny. Stuff like that always got me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just love the reactions from you and everybody. Like, oh my god, like uh, the entire world just stops. Like, holy smokes, <laughs> yeah. there's a girl over here. <laughs> Just yeah, hilarious. It's kind of like, uh, what caused you to lose that match? Uh, it's kind of hard to describe. <laughs> <laughs> well, really, it's not real hard to describe. It's, uh, uh, <laughs> man, as SummerSlam was approaching, Hogan and Savage started talking more and more about Elizabeth in a, in a yellow polka dot bikini, and now we know why. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Ted, what did you think of that as a finish? I loved it. <laughs> I, I, I did. I, I really did. It was kind of like, um, I kind of think that, uh, you know, I think that, and even watching it there, I, I think that if, if it would have, if it would have happened a little quicker, like, you know, like we're, you know, Andre and I are going, what, you know, and, and looking at the referee and whatever, you know, and, 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 you know, but it, I think it, it, you know, I think it, I think it went just a little bit too long. 
I completely agree. Um, yeah. the, if if they would have cut like the last, you know, whatever, fifteen seconds off of how long they waited before they got back into the ring and came yeah. after you guys, I think it would have come off better. But it was yeah. fun, and it's something that's you know certainly memorable. Yeah. Um, and so. <laughs> Uh, the decision for the finish met some criticism, according to the Observer, with uh, parents of young daughters being a little bit disappointed due to Liz's status as a role model, and now she's just, you know, being sexualized to get the victory. I mean, to me, it's just entertainment, but I'm wondering where you fall on that. Uh, it's it's entertainment. Come on, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I mean, and it's kind of like um, all those parents that are going, oh. Uh, you know, the, what what happened to our role model? Well, I mean, I wonder how many of those moms uh, go to the beach in a bikini every year. Yep. I mean, that's all you saw. That's uh, it. It, it, it would be like seeing a girl at the beach in a bikini. And and, we we saw a lot less than that, you know, because it's, it's oh, not oh, only yeah. she's just wearing I mean, the bikini top either. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, you know. I think that's, yeah. a, I think that's a perfect way to put it. It's just yeah, entertainment. Yeah. And yeah, we, we have I, all seen worse. Yeah, I don't agree with that, you know. Well, so. let's see let's see if you agree with this uh, note from Melter. I thought it was interesting, so I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, he's got this from The Observer. The match was acceptable, but nothing spectacular. DiBiase totally carried the whole thing, although Savage was certainly okay. Hogan wasn't much, and Andre, well, the less said about him, the better. Then our conquering heroes are posing in victory as we wait to see the small hint of the probable Hogan Savage Savage match at next year's WrestleMania. Hulk picks up Liz, Randy gives him a dirty look, and that's all we need. Although the finish, pinning Ted, was certainly predictable, I was surprised just how badly he was squashed and uh, did nothing afterwards to regain his heat and detract from the finish, i.e. if Virgil had, uh, if he and Virgil had split up, the last thing fans would, have, would remember of Ted is he jumped Virgil. And the fact that he was squashed in the match wouldn't be as important. So, uh, you know, Meltzer's saying that you kind of got well, squashed well, there. You... a guy who's never been a wrestler. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, um, uh, you know, it's kind of like um, uh, the reason that me, I, I would say me and Randy would carried the match is because, now look, you know, it's like, uh, why was I tagged up with Andre? Because I was, I was the guy that was going to be in the ring, making most of the action happen. Because Andre is Andre the Giant, mm-hmm. and and uh, you know, you, you ain't going to see Andre uh, hitting the ropes or, uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of like every time Andre wrestles, it's like whoever gets in the ring with him, it's it's. It's like they're bouncing off the ropes trying to find a way to get him to his knees, right? Yep. So, you know, it was just, I knew that I have, I mean, and I, he was right where, in terms of for my team, I, I carried the, 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 the weight of it. But, you know, that was, I knew that going in. I mean, it, it couldn't be any other way, uh, you know, because, I mean, now, now Andre's a heel. I mean, before he was a baby face and, it was easy for him to work with heels that he, you know, that could, that could, you know, like try to get him, get him down and, and do whatever. But now he's a heel, and uh, you know, or, you know, it's like, how would it look for Andre the Giant to try to sell as a heel and like fight to the corner to make the tag? It uh, doesn't work. No, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. No, I mean, I agree with you. And yeah, I mean, of course, like, look, you're the heel. So you're going to be doing a ton of bumping in the match. Andre's not going to be doing a ton of bumping. And it's like, of course, you're you're carrying it. It's, it's just that's the job. You yeah, know, exactly. Andre, Andre was not as mobile as he as he once was either. Um, and, yeah. you know, he, he had said that, like, oh, well, Ted got squashed at the end of it. And it's like, it, not really. Liz provided a distraction and you bid on the distraction and that was it. Like, I don't know. To me, it, yeah. it seems like yeah. a perfect yeah. out and you got to keep your heat. Yeah, exactly. And that's what Meltzer doesn't get. Right. Or didn't get. I don't know what he gets now. I don't know. Well, hopefully he's, he's smartened up a little bit <laughs> <laughs> when you're uh, teaming with Andre here. But I, again, I, I appreciate him, uh, you know, putting me over and everything, but you know, um, I, I just got to call it like I see it. You know, I, on that thing, I don't agree with him. I'm with you, man. 
Yeah. Now you're t you're teaming up with Andre here in 1988, um, and you had mentioned that you had teamed with Andre when you were a young man, and you know there's there's great photos out there of you uh, partnering with him, you know, and like in the in the Amarillo territory. Uh, do you treat him the same way that you would now as you would have then? Meaning, like, is the tag team match with with Andre structured similarly, or do you have to make more concessions now that he's even less mobile as an older man? Uh, um, I mean, it's it not, not really a, a whole lot ch changed. I mean, because I mean, you just look at a guy, Andre's side and, and if you, his size, um, he's not, you know, it, it, you know, what, you know, is Andre going to be in the, in the ring, uh, hitting the ropes and doing tackles and stuff? No. He never did that. I mean, and it's, it's kind of like, you know, when he was a baby face, well, then it was easy. It was, I think it was easier for him to be a baby face because, you know, then as a heel, you're just bouncing off Andre. You're, you're, you know, you're trying to find a way to, to get him down. And, and, you know, he keeps knocking you down and, and, and whatever. And you finally, you know, like uh, clip his knee or something and get him to his knees and, you know, pound on his head for a while. But eventually the big man's going to come back and beat you. Mm-hmm. You know, but as a heel, you know, I, I, I think it limited him because of his size, you know, and its stature. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, how much can he do? Other, than, I mean, it's like, here's this guy that's overbearingly bigger than anybody else in the ring. And, and he's a heel. Well, <laughs> it's like, you know, all he's going to, what, what's he going to do when he gets to the ring? He's going to be a heel. He's going to beat people up and tag out. Yeah, not a lot of other options. There's really there is there there aren't any other options and uh, and 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 again yeah I you know I obviously took the fall and 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 got beat but uh, you know it did it did I didn't lose any heat. I thought it was a great match. I'm yeah. sure uh, I'm sure there were a lot of uh, boys <laughs> in the crowd you know going through puberty who felt the same way for a different reason enjoyed the match. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I thought it was great. And I thought this episode was great, Ted. That is going to do it for this week and I talk about SummerSlam 1988. Uh, next week we're going to be coming back with another fan favorite edition of Ask Ted Anything. I know your fans have tons of questions because every time we do one of these it gets a big reaction. So I can't wait to do more next week, man. Uh, before we go, I want to remind you all that if you'd like to get this podcast early with no commercials, get access to a ton of sports, entertainment, and other shows, get over to PremierStreamingNetwork.com. Sign up for Premier Plus Podcast with RVD. You get early access to our podcast. as a game event with Efren over there. So, look, if you're a wrestling fan or a fan of sports or just entertainment, you're guaranteed to love PremierStreamingNetwork.com and Premier Plus. If you're enjoying our show and you're listening on your podcast app, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and leave us a five-star review. That helps us out. And, guys, we'll be back next week. But in the meantime, please uh, follow us on social media. You can follow the podcast at Ted DiBiase Pod on all social media platforms. Again, follow Ted at MDM Ted DiBiase on all of his social media. Follow me at Marcus P. D'Angelo on Twitter. And follow Premier Streaming Network at Watch on Premier on Twitter and at Premier Streaming Network on Instagram and Facebook. Dad, another episode in the books. This was a blast today, man. That's awesome, Marcus. And as always, I'll leave you with this. Everybody's got a price for the million dollar man. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next week right here on Everybody's Got a Pot.